All right, so as I said in the email, or I suppose as I will say in the email because I'm doing this first, um, I'm gonna walk you through the sort of procedural stuff here at the top. Um, first of all, and I sent an email earlier today to this effect, if you haven't looked over the prompts, uh, the other proposal materials that uh, I came up with and I posted, any of that stuff. I've had a lot of questions, some confusion on, on how this paper is supposed to work, and I get the sense, at least some of the time, maybe some of you aren't looking over that stuff and or doing some thinking about it, um, because I feel like a lot of the questions I'm getting are addressed in those materials. Okay, so the procedures. I wrote everything down, just to make sure we don't miss anything. Uh, to begin with, even if you've seen the movie The Pacifier, which I'm happy to say I have not, uh, although here's a very old sentence for you. Um, I know of the film because it came out when I worked at Blockbuster. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I worked inside of a red box, basically. Um, anyway, it looked like crap, and uh, I read over the plot to better understand this student's proposal, and it turns out it sounds like crap. So, yeah, if you're a fan, I'm sorry. Um, but even if you've seen it, really quickly, I, inc I include a link if that doesn't work for you for whatever reason. Uh, which could totally happen, just go to Wikipedia, because that's what it is. It's a link to the Wikipedia page for the movie. Scroll very briefly, read over the plot. You can do that in like two minutes. Um, once you do that, I want you to pause this video, uh, or rather pause this video, go read the, pl the plot, um, and then to the best of your ability, just write down anything that sounds odd, anything that could be significant, uh, stands out to you as uh, potentially interesting. Just jot that stuff down for me. Um, let me give you a second, because some of you will not have paused yet. Pause. Okay, so now that you're back, hopefully, uh, the next thing I want you to do, read over the uh, the student example, the proposal I've provided. And of course, as always, you know, standard disclaimer, let's be kind, let's be constructive, because uh, I'm going to have you do a discussion post about this stuff. Um, but anyway... Uh, go, go read it. Uh, again, write down anything that stands out to you as, as interesting. Uh, pause. Pause the video. Okay. Um, so, now they're back. Again, uh, the rest is me talking, so there, there, there shouldn't be any more pauses. Um, I want you to basically watch this. I'm going to give you my thoughts on all the stuff I just had you look at. Um, and then again, to the best of your uh, ability, try to answer... Uh, this sort of discussion post questions. I'm going to do my best to highlight or maybe explain those questions in here as well. So here we go. <clears throat> to begin with, the pacifier. Um, they kind of talk about it in terms in, in the student proposal of it being like an interesting movie. It's not. It's not interesting. But it being an interesting movie uh, because it's, it's an odd uh, premise, right? That's true. Here's the fun thing you may not realize. This is a really common trope. This, this movie exists all over the place. Uh, there's a very recent recent one that a student uh, I've had in the past wrote about. You guys have probably heard of. It's called The Game Plan, right? He's a football player. Same type of thing. There's These movies are old. There's a bunch from when I was growing up. Uh, there's a couple, I think, starring Hulk Hogan, for interest, uh, for instance. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a tried and true genre, um, which to me is interesting all on its own. It's like, why do we keep making this movie? Why... Why do we find this particular setup of like, oh, this super masculine guy, now he has to like, you know, do some mom stuff, do the like dad thing. Like, why is that interesting to us? I think we could try to answer that. That'd be one thing to think about, uh, perhaps in this uh, paper this student is going to write. All right. Interesting things. I just listed them just like I asked you to do uh, from the pacifier plot. And I tried to do this chronologically. So to begin with, he's a Navy SEAL. If you don't know what that is, and I know all of us have an idea, but uh, there's even a link in Wikipedia you could click on. Um, they're basically one of the more badass groups um, in armed forces in the world. Yeah, Navy SEALs are, are pretty legit. Uh, if you've ever looked into like how they train, not, not to mention what they actually go and do, it's pretty wild. So, yeah. Um, so we know right from the jump, he's a bad motherfucker. Okay. Uh, after that, <clears throat> we find out the the actual father in the film dies early. So obviously, there's this hole that Vin Diesel's character Shane, I believe, is his name, is going to Shane Wolf. Wow, but that guy's going to step into that role a little bit, fill that hole, perhaps. Uh, it's important that I say right from the top. You read over the plot; it'd be very easy to say that he does like take over his dad. I think he steps in. He's almost like a substitute teacher. But what's important is he doesn't 
stay in that role, right? Like traditionally, I think he and the mom would have kind of gotten together by the end. There would have been this weird moment where it's like, oh, my husband, I can't. And then they're like, but you should love me, right? And they, he just like totally steps in as the dad, but he doesn't do that. He has a different love interest at the end. Uh, and he hangs around uh, um, as a kind of father figure, but he's not actually stepping in that role. There, it's the, the absent father uh, through no fault of his own is allowed to sort of maintain his place, right? His, his position as a uh, father in this family unit. That's interesting. That's an important change that we may talk about a little later. Um, what else? Ninjas. Ninjas. Ninjas? Really? Ninjas? Okay. Um, if that didn't stand out to you, like, ah, <laughs> reading over this immediately, I was like, ninjas? Uh, so that could be important. That's pretty... Look, Navy SEALs handle all kinds of crazy shit. And I've, I've never been a Navy SEAL, so I could be wrong. I just don't think they actually fight a lot of ninjas. I don't think they do that too often. So, could be interesting. Uh, what else? Nazis. Uh, for a minute, right? To me, the way this reads anyway, again, I haven't seen the film, it, it almost seems like a fun twist where it's like, oh man, his his dad died and now this kid is going down this weird hole where like he's gonna like dye his hair black and he's like listening to weird music and you see the Nazi stuff in his locker, you know, it's like, oh, man, he's going through a real rough time. Because that stuff happens, right? Uh, even if it hasn't happened to you, you've seen movies, you get it. And then you find out, oh no, he's gonna be in The Sound of Music, which I, like, it, there are Nazis in that play, uh, that musical. So... Yeah, complete 180, like totally playing with your expectations, which is kind of interesting, right? Kind of fun. Might be worth thinking about. Um, Shane can do it all. There's a sentence in here. Let me see. Shane volunteers to take care of the show, take care of the house, give Zoe driving lessons, uh, and teach Lulu and her fellow scouts martial arts. So basically, this guy never sleeps, right? Here's an interesting thing about that. He's already a Navy SEAL. Like, he's already badass enough or should be right think back to the way we talk about Die Hard. that guy's more of an everyman i mean yeah he's a cop but you know he's not a navy seal here from the start of the film we're like this guy is an, an actual action hero like navy seals are one of the closest things we have to like real world action hero right in terms of like ability but that's not what the movie's interested in here's i'm gonna veer a little bit into talking about like what the proposal might want to be thinking about and I'll come back but when we talked about Die Hard what is that movie interested in it's really for all the shooting that stuff is ancillary right like what motivates that character it's protecting the family it's maintaining the family it's kind of learning this lesson about uh how the definition of family is maybe shifting there in the late 80s right if you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe go back and watch those lectures. Good help. Uh, or even read the proposal that I wrote. Mm. But here, he's not just a superhero in terms of his SEAL training. He's like a superhero father figure, right? I'll tell you right now, I'm worried you can hear it. I had him turn it down. My son, my oldest, is on his tablet in his room because that's the only way I could have any time to myself to do this, right? So he's watching some like awful cartoon that's the only, like, there is no way a human being can do all the things this guy does. Uh, it's just not possible in a day. Um, so he's like an, he's an, he's an action hero, yes. But in this kind of movie, I would uh, posit that he's actually almost a new term. He's like a family hero. He's a, he's a family man hero, um, which is wild. Like, that's his real superpower. I would love to have that power right now. I'm losing my mind. Um, but okay. Other things we noticed. Um, Shane wrestles the vice principal. Um, no. Right? Like, granted, this is a family movie, which is code for a kid's movie. So if you did see this film when it came out, uh, you were probably a child. Uh, and kids are dumb. You know. I was a kid once. I was dumb. Kids are dumb. You don't realize when things are ridiculous. Uh, him wrestling the, uh, the vice principal of the school is, um, uh, is ridiculous. Uh, okay, other things. The password to the vault is the dance that the dad used to do. It's like an awe moment, right? Uh, but it's also him filling in the shoes of the dad, right? And, like, understanding what's important, not just to the dad, but to the movie, right? 
I'm gonna give you a fun film term, MacGuffin. There's different ways to spell it because it's a made up thing, but uh, a common one is MC Guffin, so G-U-F-F-I-N. If you've ever seen Pulp Fiction, really good movie. Um, that movie has a MacGuffin. It's uh, the case that a couple of the characters, John Travolta and Sam Jackson are carrying around. And every time they open it, you see like this gold light and you're like, oh, there's something crazy in there, right? But you're never allowed to find out what's in it. The reason for that is it's just a plot device. It doesn't matter what's in it. What matters is that people want it. Same thing here. At least the way this reads, you never find out what's in the vault. You just know it's important. So what that means is for our, uh, the way we're trying to think about these texts, right? It's kind of saying, that's uh, sorry about that weird hiccup. Um, I'm gonna have to edit these together. I got a phone call in the middle of the damn video. Uh, airplane mode, my bad. All right, so, oh, MacGuffins. Um, so what matters in the movie then like, the, the vault premise keeps the whole thing moving. Like, the bad guys want it, the good guys have to protect it. But again, the fact that we never find out what's in there tells us that it uh, it's not what matters in the movie. It's not our real concern. Our real concern is this family, is this Shane character learning to appreciate the family and, and protect them, like McLean does. But he, his big journey is learning how to participate in that family, right? It seems like he, he learns pretty fast, actually. Um... But that's important. Anything else? There's more ninjas. They were the Korean neighbors. Okay, so Koreans are ninjas. Probably a wee bit racist. Um, anything else? Oh, Shane stays. It kind of seems like he's going to leave, right? He kisses the love interest, and you're like, oh, he's not going to stay with the family, so he has to go do SEAL stuff. And it's like, and he's going to stay and teach wrestling and, like, how to be a real man. But this is what's important, and this is going to bring us to our proposal uh, discussion. In the same way, I would argue, when we think about McLean, we think about his values, right, and the journey he goes on, the thesis I gave you guys, I'm going from memory, was something to the effect of he he doesn't just protect the family. He has to kind of learn and accept this new definition of family, and that's what he protects. <clears throat> so for us, what that, what that helps us argue is here in the late 80s when that movie came out, the world was kind of shifting. Women were, you know, had a little more power, you know. Um, and we as a society were grappling with that just like McLean was. And the movie is kind of saying, well, this is what family is now. So if you're going to claim to value family and, and all of that, then you have to kind of get on board with this shifting landscape as well uh, in terms of sort of power dynamics, right? Marriage and more partnership. That was a pretty new idea. It's a new idea to some people now, actually. Um, the rest of the proposal stuff, they kind of open with this. Is he stepping into the role of a mom? Like, look, again, I know about the genre. I'm willing to bet there's like a scene where he, he has to like do a young girl's hair or something like that, right? I'm sure that happens. Whenever this movie came out, early 2000s, had to have been because that's when I was working at Blockbuster. Um, traditionally, that's the role of a mom. But you think about all the stuff he does, to me, given the time... He's just stepping into the role of the dad, right? He's filling in for the dad that's gone. He does some mom stuff because the mom's not there. But that's what a dad does too, right? My wife's out. I do everything. Because if you didn't, well, you're not a parent, right? But th that's how things work now. What else? Uh, they kind of end on this weird gambit. Like, half of it I understand. We're thinking about dads and how they work. Um, in the movie, and then of course, in some way, like in society, but they veer into this weird thing about uh, they want to do research on the effects of a stay-at-home dad, uh, and perhaps even the, the other side of the coin, like if your dad's not there, how that affects you. My concern with that, I mean, you can look into that stuff; it may give you some other ideas. My concern with that is that it could very easily lead you to the, the a thesis like it's it's not good for a kid to not have a dad. <laughs> or a father figure, and it's like, yeah, we, we know that. It's sad when it happens, and it, it'd be nice if it didn't, but, like, all the studies in the world, I mean, maybe with a few exceptions, aren't, aren't going to give us a whole lot of information on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you're emotionally stunted when you don't have a dad in your life, and it's like, yeah, we know. Uh, so I wouldn't at least concentrate on that, right? 
to me goes it goes all the way back to our discussion of Fairchild and this I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it back but when we talked about dads in oh uh, was it little boy we d- I tried anyway to not keep discussion on you know what's the effect all this has on the boy blah 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 with his relationship with his dad right it's more about <clears throat> what motivates those two characters or moves them around each other right type of thing and to me if you're going to talk about that poem it was well how are we defining fathers um in this poem that's definitely going on in this movie right he is a surrogate father he's a substitute father for the course of the the movie what does that look like what are we saying here in 2000 whenever this came out what are we saying a dad is? He's a fucking superhero, right? Can do it all. More than that, he can do the SEAL stuff. He can go wrestle the vice principal, right? Like, oh, you're being a jerk to my kid. I'll show you, right? Some of you have had that happen. Some of you have had parents come in and be like, I'm going to tell them off. And thankfully in college, you're not, I don't have to talk to your parents. Um, but that's a real thing, right? But here, again, because it's a movie, it gets, like, elevated. Um, there, there are all these sort of tenets of fatherhood and in the, in the ways that we think about dads that this movie is trying to argue. So, again, to me, his motivation is family. His motivation is uh, maintaining the family. Again, it's interesting that he probably has to learn some of that first. That I could, I could help a little more if I've seen the movie. But I'm willing to bet there's some scenes where he's kind of like learning on the job and screwing up, right? Because that happens. That's part of his journey. So what does he learn to value? It seems his value shift over the course of the film. He starts a SEAL, but then it's important. He quits that life and becomes like a high school wrestling coach. And he's going to like be a father figure to all these kids now. Again, uh, what is he teaching these kids in terms of values? All of that is lumped into the story we tell ourselves about what a dad is right? That, whatever that story is, is at the very least going to be a huge part of your thesis, if not your entire thesis. Lastly, I'm almost done, I promise. I cannot stress enough. I keep getting proposals. I keep getting emails uh, that start a lot like this one, right? I understand you chose the character because he's, he's very masculine, but that cannot be what your paper is about. You cannot write me a paper where uh, this one sounds a lot like Taken in a weird way, right? Super Dad, basically, in the movie Taken, if you haven't seen it. That's a very masculine character. One of the tests we give, right? If you had somebody for the first time ever sit down and watch this movie or Taken, and you're like, that guy's really masculine. They're like, I know. It's going to be hard to write a paper about that with an argument that's that easy to make, right? So what do we do instead? Well... Again, you got to go a little bit deeper. What are the characters' motivations? Does any of that stand out as odd, especially given the genre? Um, and here, it's about family. It's about this this weird definition in, I mean, honestly, I, I had the Wikipedia page. All right, it came out in 2005, The Pacifier. So in 2005, what were we saying a father is? Uh, how do they work? Um... I mean, if you wanted to, and again, it depends on the paper went, there is a fun bit of racism thrown in there, right? You can't trust people who look different, it sounds like. It's kind of fun. Uh, that gets lumped into our definition of fathers there in 2005. That, that's real. That's in the movie. The Korean neighbors must be evil ninjas. They must be. That's, that's a fun twist. So it could even be like, although we... And I, I'm totally coming up with what I'm talking about, but like, although we see in the film... A lot of like virtuous characteristics in how we define fathers. You know, he's he's a do it all. He's there for the kids every step of the way. They have misunderstandings. He irons them out. Um, he proves his masculinity against this like guy who the the faux masculine vice principal authority figure. So we also learn another body paragraph might be what real authority is in the film, especially in terms of fathers. All this stuff comes back to the home. The real power in the movie. Real. Everything in the movie seems to come back to the home, right? Think of the password for the vault. It's all about coming back to the family unit here. Although all that, and this is true. This is true in the film. Although all that stuff is, is 
seen as laudable and important, most important, comma. We also have this fun little racist tangent where it's almost like it's almost like you could argue only certain families are uh, important. Do you know what I mean? Only, and I haven't seen the movie, but I remember the box art, only like very white traditional families are, uh, are, are what we want to celebrate, you know, something like that. Like, or, or if you don't want to go like, I mean, it may not be necessarily race, but definitely um, in terms of country, right? Um, and it's for an American audience, so, like, I get that. I'm not trying to bash the movie. I'm sure it's bad on its own merits. It doesn't need the, the racist thing, but it's there. And it, there's just, there's a lot of ninjas in the movie. I want to end with that. There's a lot of ninjas with the movie, in the movie. If I was writing about the pacifier, I would have to have a body paragraph on ninjas. Yeah, you, you have to. How can you not? Um, so to, to close it out, again, whatever your film, they're all going to have masculine uh, characters, because that's the damn theme of the class, right? Okay, what else, man? Here we got ninjas, and he dances, and there's Nazis for a second, but then you find out it's not real Nazis, right? What is the character's motivation? It's not the SEAL stuff, it's not the masculine stuff, right? It's not. So don't talk about it. It doesn't, it, it, it tells you with the MacGuffin that that stuff doesn't matter. Those, those are plot. Family matters. Good show, by the way. Family matters in this movie. Um, but how are we defining it? How is it built? It, we are talking about uh, fathers, but even here we see a guy step into the role of a father, so we also might be arguing against genetic fatherhood, and it's, it's like something else, some other way to define fathers, right? That's the stuff you guys got to think about no matter what you choose. Please don't write me papers where it's just, this guy's a man because it's, it's going to be a bad time.